Hello, 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 and welcome back to Jen Hannigan's. It's just Jen today. Um, I have a video that I've been wanting to make for a while, a topic that I wanted to talk about. So I had a few minutes where my kids are asleep and should not interrupt. And so I'm sitting out in my backyard and it's a gorgeous day, thank the Lord. And I'm going to just make a quick video about something that I've been thinking a lot about. So um, for the first thing that I want to do is I want to start out with kind of explaining what WW and I track bites are. Um, I know that there's a lot that follow us that um, aren't familiar with the program. Um, WW Weight Watchers um, has been around for forever and um, it's basically just a point system um, for tracking and for eating, you know, rather than tracking calories. Um, when I started Weight Watchers, it was um, freestyle and it was where you had certain things that were zero points um, and so that, that appealed to me that I could um, eat certain things and not have to worry about tracking it because I hated tracking calories for that reason. I just couldn't stand having to like, you know, pinpoint every little thing. Um, and so now they have three color plans, which is green, purple, and blue. Hannah and I do the blue plan. Um, I was on WW and then just because it was cheaper, I switched over to iTrack Bites, which is the same thing. iTrack Bites Better Balance is the same thing as WW Blue Plan. So um, on WW Blue Plan, I can't give a whole lot of detail on green and purple. I will make a video um, with all of them at some point, but for us, blue works best, so, or better balance if you're on iTrack Bites. Um, but for that, we get um, chicken breast, um, fish, shrimp, um, vegetables, Greek yogurt, fruit, apple, unsweetened applesauce, um, fat-free beans, fat-free refried beans, and regular beans. Um, are all uh, zero points on the blue plan. And so that just works out really well for us because it's less to track. It just feels more like normal eating. And so, and you know that at the end of the day, if you have no points left, then you still have a variety of items that you can eat. So that is why this works well for us. So um, if you are interested in WW, um, Hannah's link will be on the um, in the description box. And then I track bites. There is no link, but it is um, significantly cheaper than WW, um, and exactly the same thing. So we we use both programs. So uh, with that being said, um, I want to talk about tracking today because. Um, in my opinion, when you first get started with something like this, when you would go to change your eating, it's a lot easier to commit to, um, I'm going to track everything that I eat rather than, um, I'm just going to eat all of the good things I'm going to do perfectly. It's just easier to say, I'm going to track everything that I eat versus I'm going to change my whole eating plan. So Hannah always suggests to everybody who starts that they track their first week with what they're already eating. So without changing your eating habits, um, tracking that first week, just this is what I'm already eating. This is how many points I'm consuming. And it gives you a really good idea of what you need to change. But if you can make the commitment to tracking your food and um, regardless of what you're eating, then you are on the right track. It's just a, a good place to start just by tracking. Don't change anything at first, just track it all. So um, I have a couple things that I like to do. I'm looking over here because I have some notes that I jotted down real quick. I wanna make sure that I am a little bit organized with this, but there's a couple things that I suggest to people and that, that work really well for me. These may not work for everybody, but this is just something that I have already found. We've been on WW, I track bites for two years now. And so we've kind of found what works and what does not work. Um, so the first one that I'm going to say is to track as you go. Um, if you are waiting till the end of the day to think back and track what you were eating, then um, you're going to find that you have accumulated a lot of points because you have not been mindfully tracking everything that you're eating as you're eating it. So um, my breakfast normally stays pretty much the same. It normally stays in like between a four and seven point range. And so I, that's one of the meals that I will wait a little bit if I like, don't get right on my app in the morning. But if I wait to track, then I'm going to see that, oh my goodness, I, you know, accidentally had 
15 points for lunch and then another 20 points for supper and then I had a 10 point dessert and whatever it may be. So uh, my first tip is just to track as you go. Just start in the morning and, and plus it gives you the mindset of I'm doing this, I'm tracking, I'm, you know, I've got my mind where it's supposed to be. Um, my second tip is to track honestly. So if you do not have a food scale, I would suggest getting one. It's not, it doesn't, it takes you seriously 20 seconds more to measure out your food. And it, you're, you're eating a lot more than what you think you are if you're not measuring a lot of the time. So, and sometimes you're pleasantly surprised and you're like, oh, I can have a little bit more for this measurement. So it's just important to have a food scale and to measure and to be as honest as you can. Sometimes if you're gonna go to a restaurant, you're not gonna be able to track everything perfectly. And so um, if I do that, I try to choose, like let's say there's, we eat Mexican a lot, so let's say there's refried beans, okay? Well, if you look up refried beans on the iTrack Bites app, you're gonna see everything from zero points for fat-free refried beans or 10 points for refried beans with cheese in them. So as honestly and as accurately as you can, find that kind of, for me, I find the middle ground. So if it's saying that I have, you know, it's 10 points for half a cup here or zero points for half a cup here, well, I know that the ones at the restaurant are probably not fat-free, so I'm gonna go to about five points for that half a cup or whatever maybe. So try to find, don't always shoot for the lowest just because you want to get more bang for your buck because it's not honest it's just do it do it as accurately and as honestly as you can um, yeah so measure your food be accurate and don't always choose the lowest options that the program gives you on the app uh, number three this is Hannah's idea she told me to add this and I think it's a great one um, pre tracking so if you are like let's say you've struggled over the weekend you've had a you know, weekend where you just ate super high points um, then, and you want to do really well the next day. That's one of the days where I'm going to be like, okay, I need to kind of pre-plan my food, which would involve me pre-tracking. So I would say I'd even go to the next day in the app and say for breakfast, I'm going to do this for lunch. I'm going to do this for supper. I'm going to do this, give you a little leeway for snacks, but, um, it'll just kind of set you up for, this is what my plan is. So pre-tracking helps you plan and planning is makes everything so much better, so much easier. Um, and just helps you to be set up for success. So um, also Hannah mentioned doing pre-tracking for restaurants, which is a really good idea. If you know that you're gonna go out to eat that night, look up that restaurant or one similar to it and see what is on the menu and um, try to find yourself some healthy options before you get there. That way you're not bombarded with either being hungry or being hurried or whatever. You're just ready to order something that is um, delicious and that is not going to send you way over on your points. So pre-tracking for restaurants, pre-tracking for holiday meals if you're able to. And I'm not talking about those. I mean, we all have those big meals like Thanksgiving and Christmas where it's just kind of, you know, boom. But um, I'm talking about if you know, like we're having a barbecue this weekend, it's going to be 4th of July weekend. So we know that I know that I'm going to need to have um, some kind of turkey hot dog or something that I can you know, go back to for, to be able to eat and enjoy, but also, so it comes down to that pre-tracking and planning, but for those holiday meals, for the restaurants, um, if you're making a high point meal and you know it's going to be a high point meal, my mother-in-law loves for me to make pasta, so I know that for that night, I need to plan, I need to like pre-track for that and know that I'm going to have enough points for, um, for what I'm going to eat, so then I could keep it a little bit lower point at the beginning of the day. So anyway, just pre-tracking for the things that you know you may struggle with a little bit more. Number four, my favorite one that I tell everybody, track even on the bad days. Okay, so let's say you start the day out really well and you're just doing great and all of a sudden you eat a pint of ice cream or whatever it could be that's gonna throw you off um, all of a sudden we just want to stop tracking we throw it out we're like hey you know whatever whatever happens the rest of the day I'll start over again tomorrow um, there's a lot of reasons why you could be overeating going over your points um, I, I there's emotional eating there's busy eating there's holiday eating um, you know any of those things and we tend to just throw tracking out the window and say we'll start again tomorrow 
The thing that tracking does for you on a bad day, for one, it doesn't change the fact, <laughs> just because you didn't track it, doesn't mean you didn't eat it. it. You just, you ate it. So you may as well just be honest with yourself, put it in your tracker, it's done, whatever. Um, and this applies to anybody who's also tracking calories. This is not just for points, but just put it in there. The thing that tracking does for you is in a day where you are busy eating, emotional eating, holiday eating, whatever it might be, those are days where you feel like I don't have much control in the situation. Like I was busy, I was emotional, there was, you know, I was at a party, I was whatever. So the thing that tracking does, you have control. It's the one thing that you have control over. Whether you don't feel like you have control in your eating, you have control in just being accountable to yourself and knowing that you, you ate it, you tracked it, it gives you... It's kind of like when we start to gain weight, we like don't want to get on the scale for a while. That's what it comes down to. And then we don't get on the scale. We don't get on the scale. We don't get on the scale. We don't want to, uh, you know, like face it. And then all of a sudden you get on the scale and you've gained 30 pounds. So um, if you're tracking your food, you know that, hey, I went way over. This is not okay. Like it is, it really does do some and I've had those days I've had those days where I have tracked 100 points just recently at my mom's house we we were I was helping them move so we were out to eat a lot and I tracked 100 points that day and I'm like and nobody wants to see that you don't want to see your weeklies go into negative before you know you're in the middle of the week so it's not easy to see but I knew where I was and then when it comes down to weigh-in day if I see an increase on the scale I know exactly where that came from because I ate this and this and this we think back when we're on the scale and we've and the number has gone up we think back to the week we're like well, I didn't do that bad when really you just kind of fudge those things in your mind you really don't have a good like um, recollection of what you actually ate you're just kind of like giving yourself excuses but if you have it tracked then you have it it's right there you see wow I went 70 over my points which is what I did so anyway, that is my biggest thing, is just even track on the bad days. It's gonna give you control that you don't feel like you have. So, that's it. <laughs> that's it, those are my four tips. I'm sure that after I post this video, I'm gonna think I should have done this and this and this. But um, I just think it's so important to just, to just track and just be accountable. And it just, even in the days where you're not feeling like you're doing great, like on the days where you're not doing great, you feel like you're doing a little bit better just because you're holding yourself accountable and it's so important in this journey for us to be honest with ourselves and to I mean show yourself grace absolutely I, I feel like you know it was excusable that I had a hundred points at my mom's house you know there was a lot of things working against me but I'm not gonna lie to myself I'm not gonna be um, you know just kind of like no it's okay you know it's it's not as bad as you think well yeah it was but I own it so just be honest with yourself anyway I think that is it for now and I know that I'm gonna get off of here and think I should have said this and this and this so maybe at the end of this video I might have an add-in of hey I should have said this we'll see so um, I hope that this helps somebody I know it was kind of just kind of quick and um, not my best work but there were sort of things that was on my mind and I just hope that I hope that somebody got something out of it so anyway I am going to end this now and if you like this video then like this video if you have something you'd like to add then please comment below also head over to our Facebook page um, Jen Hannigan's and you can find an accountability post I am posting the calendar for July so you will have that um, and then that's it so uh, thanks for watching and I will see you next time